And once again on this channel, let's see something crazy, which is how to create this vertical beam attack. Hi, I'm Gabriel Aguiar, currently developing Rabbit's Tail, and despite this being a very complex effect, today I will try my best to explain you the basics on how to get a simplified version of this cool vertical beam. I hope you guys enjoy it, and by the way, this is all available on my Patreon's page. You get access to this project and many many other assets that you can use in your games. Plus, you keep the channel running. Links below and let's jump right into this. So as you can see, this has a lot of details going on. What we are going to focus on is the shape, the cylinder, the motion and the different layers used. So let's start by creating a visual effect graph with right click. Feel free to follow along with the particle system. There's also this video that I made a while back that may help you convert VFX graph to particle system. Rename this, drag it to the scene, and press the edit button to open this up. And since we want only one cylinder at a time, let's replace this with a single burst. Oh, let me just turn off auto compile and auto reinit, so every time I make a change, this doesn't compile. Single burst for the spawn, one particle for the count, this does need to move. And the lifetime can be constant for the cylinder. Let's say this will last 3 seconds, for example. And let's drag a new line after the update particle for mesh. We can remove this quad because we are going to use a cylinder. Something like this one. As a matter of fact, if you open up Blender, I can quickly show you how to create one. Essentially, we want an empty scene. And in add, we want to add a cylinder. On this left bottom panel, we want to say the cap field type is nothing, so it is essentially only a ring with no top and bottom faces. And with tab, we can enter in edit mode, select everything with A, and with G, we want to move this up only in Z a value of 1. We are doing this so the pivot is at the bottom, and we can scale it up from the bottom. Let's use shade smooth in object. So it becomes smooth, rename this to cylinder tooth, for example. And with the cylinder selected, on file, let's go to export, FBX. Turn on selected objects, navigate to your project. Rename this and export it. And back in Unity, now, let's select our cylinder. Say the scale factor is 100 and press apply. And in VFX graph, we can select our mesh. Before we compile, let's already take care of the size with a set size. We can say it's 1, and then a set scale, where we can say it's 1, 1, and 15 for the Z. That's how tall we want this to be, if we compiled it, if we save it or compile it. As you can see, it's laying on the ground. It's an easy fix on the initialized particle, we can say, with a set angle, that is minus 90 on the X. Compile again, and it's facing up. Great. And this is gonna be for the cylinder core, the brightest part of this attack. To make it the brightest part, we can remove the main texture, none, and then with a set color, we can use values like 50 for the X, which is the red channel, 17 for the Y, which is the green channel, and 9 for the blue channel, the Z. Here we go, it's glowing, because I have essentially a bloom in my scene, by the way, and it's still very static. So what we can do is search for a scale over life, and select the multiply scale over life, or in composition, say it's multiply. The X is going to be this flat line, as well as the Y. And for the Z axis, we are going to use this diagonal line from 0 to 1, but with right click for the last key, we can say the value is 0 0.15. And here we go, it's growing, perhaps a little bit too slow. If that's the case, you can set that value, the last key, is 0 0.1. Looking better. This is where you take care of the motion, which we will do later on, if we have the time. For now, let's select this entire particle system, 
and with Ctrl+C, c Ctrl v paste it down here and rename it to cylinder back which is gonna be our background first thing we can do is enlarge this we can say the x and y are gonna be 4.9 and for the color i'm gonna use once again a very specific value but you can try different colors obviously 0 0.075 0 and 0 0.22 here we go purple cylinder but it's a little bit too transparent. We can easily fix this with a set alpha and set it to 2. Here we go, it's completely opaque. And as you can see, it is in front of the core. And it's essentially because this one is being rendered first. If we select our VFX graph, now in the inspector we can push to the top the sander back. If we test it again, here we go. Bright in the center, dark all around. It's a nice beginning. Let's improve this with another layer. Let's select this entire particle system and with Ctrl+C, c Ctrl v again, create a duplicate, but this time for the Voronoi Fresnel. Let's increase a little bit its radius to 5 in the X and Y. And we could remove this set color, because we are going to use a shader up here. We have this shader graph input. If you don't see it, you can go to Edit in Preference, select Visual Effects, and make sure experimental operator slash box is turned on and then with right click in the folder in shader graphs let's create in urp an unlit shader graph which means it won't be affected by the lights of the scene by the way rename it to flannel shader double click to open it up and on the graph inspector let's make sure we turn on allow material override so we can control these settings directly in vfx graph if needed Let's say it's transparent and it's very important to turn on support VFX graph down here so it works in VFX graph and we want to start with the star of this shader which is the Fresnel node and in terms of properties we are going to need a color you can rename it to Fresnel color for example and a float for a Fresnel power the color it's going to be in HDR mode and the color for now it can be white with alpha at 100 and the power is 1 for the default value and connect to the power input of the Fresnel effect and now we can multiply this with a color and connect to the base color oh and for the alpha we can split this so we can have access only to the alpha connect to the alpha like this here we go as you can see it has the black dot in the middle it disappears it becomes transparent and the Fresnel power will expand this as you can see let's save this and head back to vfx graph so we can now assign right here our fresnel shader to it let's compile this so we can see how it is the white you are seeing is the fresnel cylinder make sure it's being rendered after everything so it is on top of everything by the way let me do a quick compile here for the fresnel power let's say it's 5.5 .5. It's very subtle because now we are going to say the color is very bright. Something like 68 for the red channel, followed by 7 to the green channel, and maybe 3 or 2 to the blue channel. And here we go, we get this bright edge. The Fresnel power could be lower, perhaps. It's up to you to try it. But yeah, looking good, look at it. Let's duplicate this particle system once again with Ctrl C and Ctrl V because now we want a cylinder for the Voronoi. Let's just increase a little bit the radius to 5.2 and 5.2. Let's just increase a little bit the radius to 5.2 in the X and Y, and we need a new shader as the name suggests. It's gonna be a very simple one. So we we'll right click in Shader Graph, another unlit Shader Graph, rename it to Voronoi Shader, for example, double click to open this one up, and now once again on the graph inspector let's turn on allow material overwrite let's say it's transparent and very importantly let's turn on alpha clipping because we want this shade to erode the Voronoi texture and then turn on support VFX graph in terms of properties we need a color in HDR mode with white and half at 100% and then the star of this shader is the Voronoi note so let's search for it and add it what we can already do is multiply these two together, the color and the Voronoi. So the color influences the Voronoi and connect to the 
base color. Oh, and let's split this so we can get access to the alpha. In other words, so we can get transparency. And as you can see, alpha clipping is already working. It's set to 0 0.5. That's why we see these holes. Let's create a float for that and call it clip and say it's a slider between 0 and 1 and say it is a slider between 0 and 1 and connect to the alpha clip threshold. Here we go. Another thing we can do is take care of the tiling and the speed. We want this for an to scroll. We want it to pan, to move, to have speed basically. So let's use a tiling and offset node. The tiling will be useful to control how stretched we want the Voronoi to be. It will create a cool effect you will see in a moment. Let's create two vector twos. One for the Voronoi tiling and another one for the Voronoi speed. Voronoi tiling with a default value of 1 and 1 on the X and Y. Connect it to the tiling and for the speed for this to work out. If we want this to be animated we need the time variable. And then it's a matter of multiplying the time with the Voronoi speed parameter and connecting this to the offset. If you have been following this channel, you have done this plenty of times. If not, I suggest you look into a few more videos, you will learn a lot of stuff. This is what the speed does. Let's set it to zero again and save this shader because now on VFX Graph we want to use it. Click the shader graph input and select the Voronoi shader tutorial exactly like this. Let me decrease the clip real quick to 0 0.5. It was way too high. Let me just compile this and pause it. Oh, here we go. This is the Voronoi. It's weird. That's normal. We need to take care of the tiling. Let's say on, on the Y I'm gonna actually say it's a negative value of, of minus 0 0.5. More or less. And on the X, I'm gonna increase it a lot. So we get these nice spikes. 7.5, 8. And then if we say the Voronoi speed is 1, here we go. Look at this beautiful stuff. And then you can control the clip, which is essentially how much Voronoi do you want. Right? And I'm actually going to leave it at around 0 0.65, 0 0.7, around those values, you know? The Fresnel power could also be lower, but overall, it came out great. Let's update the color. I'm gonna show you the same values that I used, which is 11.3 for the R, 1.65 for the G, and 0.77 for the B, and 1.2 for the Alpha. Very specific values, but this will give it that really cool touch, as you can see, that anime feeling color style. Now, one of the last layers we can add let's duplicate this, Control c Control v is for kind of an electricity feeling, blue feeling. We can call this one Voronoi 2. Let's increase its radius a little bit more to around 5.4 for the X and Y. Now the cool thing is that we are going to stretch this even more in the Y axis on the tiling, so minus 0 0.4, and we are gonna say it's blue by switching the R with the B value, 11.3 for the B, 0 0.77 for the R, and if we test this out, we get this really cool blue feeling. It's a little bit too much, I'm gonna clip it even more to around 0 0.8, just so we have a small touch of this color. It really adds that punchy feeling, you know, it's awesome. The combination of these two colors is just great. And here we go, it looks fantastic in my opinion. What's really missing here is, despite all the details that I'm not going to show because it takes really long time, it's the motion. As it is now, the sun grows up and that's it. And it suddenly disappears. We are going to take care of that. Let's add an animation curve for the cylinder grow X and Y. Only for the X and Y. We are going to connect this to the scale X and scale Y of the multiply scale over life on all of our layers, on all of our cylinders. Control C, Control V, the property, connect it. And for the curve we can say it's a flat and around 0 0.9 we are going to add a key and then push the last key all the way down to 0 so it shrinks on the X and on the Y only. On the beginning we are going to add a key more or less at 0 0.025 and then push the first key all the way down so it gains volume in the beginning, and then we are going to add another key after 0 0.05, around 0 0.075. We are going to fix this handle so it looks like this, and then add another key 
around 0 0.1 until we get a curve similar to this one. And then we are going to add a couple more keys, one in 0 0.2, push it above 1, another at around 0 0.3, push it below 1, another at 0 0.4, and then 0 0.5, and 0 0.6, and 0 0.7, and 0 0.8. But, towards the end, instead of being always increments of 0 0.1, it starts to wobble a little bit faster. So let's push these keys like this. I highly recommend it to make a few tests because the motion is extremely important. You won't get it right at first try, but I'm giving you the basis to help you out and I think this curve will point you in the right direction. And here we go, we get a much more interesting feeling for this, right? And you can communicate a lot of stuff with this when it has reached its climax and then it's going to close and so on. But that's essentially it. Obviously, I then added a few particles in a cylinder shape going up really fast and then some debris, which is a small 3D object. And then we have these black impacts at the bottom that really adds a nice touch. The marks on the ground, the cracks on the ground. Oh, and the orb in the beginning to create some anticipation. All of these details are available on my courses and on my tutorials. I've linked everything below. And in case you want to get your hands on this project and see how it is done, it's all available on my Patreon's page. And by supporting me, you keep this channel running and you get access to a lot of projects. I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month. And as usual, a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are awesome, and they are Alberto Sageres, Alexander Brazy, Alan Alstead, Aviat Tobali, Cyber Cradle, CZ Chai, Daniel Schmidt, Danny Elius, David Blissett, Diaku, Diego Marx, Doom, Eric Arner, Fang Striker, Frosty40, Grav Lab, Jared Billy, KC Miller, Lee Ann Holt, Lutuli, Matt Moran, Max, Mike Bell, Mikolai Adamski, Milos, Nat Sims, Nikolai Yalnazov, Oitsk, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, RVR, Cyan, Sean Aguilar, Travis McCollum, Very Suta, Whatever Mark, Arta, Will Poilian, Begina Zero, Dong Mao Dong, Xin Pyong Ling, and Min Jae Kim. Thank you all very much for your support, you guys keep this channel running while you get access to awesome rewards. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you, bye.